So um, this is my very first stream and I'm actually quite excited. This has been on my bucket list to do for uh, many, 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 many years. So uh, I'm, I'm glad I'm finally just ticking this off the old to-do list. Um, and so about like a decade ago, I played a fun dating sim and it was about pigeons. And you know, it sounds weird, but you were romancing with pigeons and it was fine. So uh, I wanted to play another fun one, uh, something light and really quick in comparison to most games. So uh, I thought I would see what KFC is up to. And apparently they have their own uh, game that they commissioned to have done. So I thought it would be fun to play um, I Love You Colonel Sanders. So let's get spicy and I, I hope this goes well because <laughs> uh, it's my first time. So here we go. I'm just super sad like that's not an anime like that's all I really want out of this whole thing is just a whole TV show about all that so very very excited uh, so before we get started tell us your name um, I'm gonna try to do my best here so let's choose let's choose a name that will work for getting the uh, getting the old Colonel Sanders spice so pepper You sleep softly as the morning sun casts a warm glow through the window of your modest student apartment. The world is peaceful and serene, and you can stay in this moment forever. Or you could wake up now, now, now. Your first day of culinary school is no time to sleep in. God, that is a horrible sound, so we're gonna smack that clock. Lying in bed, you stare at the ceiling. Think about everything that awaits you at the prestigious University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Your mind begins to wonder. Who will be there? What will you cook? What should you wear? Time begins to fly by and you find your imagination getting away from you. You need to take this seriously or you need to allow yourself to daydream a bit, thinking about the future. Let's be honest. Can we talk about that chicken? This is great. It's here, finally, your first day of culinary school. So many dishes to prepare, so many students to meet. Your mind is swimming with possibilities when you realize you're running late. You grab a biscuit and burst out the door in a hurry. Mmm, delicious. Just what you needed to wake up those taste buds. Girl, that dry. Those biscuits are dry. I hope you got water. Yikes, you're in such a hurry. In fact, you forgot to drink. Uh, you forgot to put on any deodorant before running out the door. You're sweating buckets as you rush to arrive on time. Uh-oh. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. Aw, she's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met. And you absolutely love her for it. She's so cute. Uh, she says she's awkward, so uh, let's see. Good morning, Pepper. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Actually, I'm, because I sure am. Excited, a little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. Uh, what's the, it's just that this morning, I made breakfast for myself, but well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. What if I'm no good? What if I fail? <laughs> okay, this is me. Classic Miriam, raised by Master Chef parents, she's always held herself to a very high standard. 
Ever since we were little babies playing together and you rescued me from that quicksand box, it's been clear to me that you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're gonna do great. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> Oh, but with the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning's famous three-day only semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. Three days? I, that, that's not a lot for a whole university. <laughs> How am I gonna romance somebody in three days? Oh my god, sweet girl. Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. This summer, she got so nervous about her first kiss that she chipped a tooth on practicing on a mannequin. Oh, that is not me, honey. Should you... So did you uh, pep talk her or change the subject and give her some relief? We gotta hype up our friends. That's what we do. Remember last month when we saw that fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? Hmm. The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. I know she looked spooky, but she was so sweet. And she told you that you were destined for great things. Remember the card with the fancy looking tower? And the other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit. Ooh, we're gonna need to look out for a guy in a red suit. I've been waiting so long to meet my handsome fellow I could call my own. <laughs> I, and I am sure you will soon. In no time, we'll be graduating. And you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves begin to ease. Now she looks mad. You know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. Can you believe I cut them myself? You can definitely believe it, poor girl. I, um, I cannot believe it. Before you get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks your books and custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands onto the ground. Hey! It's Ashley, your arch rival. Ugh. She's totally evil, but you can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants, and she knows it. I don't like how they spelled her name wrong. Hello, Ashley. Uh, oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shins. You leave pepper shins alone. They're perfectly normal shins. <laughs> uh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact it's actually Ashley, but she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. Yes. Uh, if anyone knows what's um, <laughs> sorry, uh, if anyone knows what's perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not gonna let you or your we really weird insults get to us. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Fan Fan the Man Man, has stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight, you can actually see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. <clears throat> Van Van. Oh no. Oh boy. <laughs> you rang rang? <laughs> You've never been sure what their arrangement is, but as long as you've known them, Ashley and Van Van have been just as close as you and Miriam, but substantially more devious. I can't believe the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning's Academy for Learning would even allow people like you to attend as students. I know, right? You think they just hand us our diplomas now, or maybe hire us on as professors? You amateurs can learn a lot from us. With the first school, with the first day of school about to start, there's just no time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. Let's go, Miriam. <laughs> See you later, losers. Oh, as you approach the door, you see a goofy looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. Oh, oopsie, I think it's broken. You reach forward and easily pull the door open. Uh, that should do the trick. I love you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know what a five-year-old sounds like. <laughs> I don't know if he's five, maybe seven, eight, I don't know. Uh, I think you mean thank you. My name is Pop. I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. Could someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. Oh, baby. <laughs> Hi, Pop. I'm Pepper. So, are you going to make me hold this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. 
Is it just me or is he kind of cute? I think it's just you. You both shrug off your shoulders before following him into the building. Oh. Okay. You stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy by chit-chatting. Oh, it's a corgi. I have a corgi. A uh, scruffy looking pooch takes his place at the podium in front of the class. Adorable. Sprinkles. Now, now, quiet down, everyone. Who is this unreasonably cute pup and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor and CEO of UCSAL. Please, call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and a little fluffy, but I still demand respect. Woof. <laughs> what a cute dog as our professor. This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, a wind begins to rush around you as you swirl of cherry blossom petals fill the air inside the classroom. I'm chilly. Someone closed the window. And then he walks in. Oh, wow. Look at Spicy Mick Spicerson. Uh, you are immediately swept up in the aura of this new student and his remarkable goatee. Who knew anyone could be so handsome? Time stands still. Look at the corgi. He's in love too. <laughs> oh, Miriam. It's him. It's... If it isn't my favorite student, Har Harland. Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles, sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. Harland says, please call me Colonel. Colonel Sanders, oh God, he's like James Bond. <laughs> A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly the, womb, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to bead across your brow and you feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely <sighs> wrong. And this over here must be sweaty, sweats a lot. <laughs> Fan Fan, oh my God, his outfit is, oh dear God. Um, maybe we should open a window back up before faucet pits melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Hold on just a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. She's so cute. God. Oh, man. You two both know my name? We were in this... Oh, she's angry. I get it. You two both know my name. We were both in the same kindergarten class. And what is with all your really weird insults? Besides, when Pepper sweats, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. <laughs> See? We hype our friends. Even when they're gross. Uh, besides, when Pepper sweats, it's not gross, it's beautiful, look at that shimmer, and I only get one choice. So you turn to find Colonel Sanders staring, or standing right in front of you. Mm. Colonel Sanders, beautiful angel that he is, stands before you, smiling gently, his hand outstretched. Boy, howdy, this classroom gets hotter than a Kentucky Friar. <laughs> yes! Oh, goddamn, he's stacked! Okay, Colonel works out. Please use my handkerchief. <laughs> oh, oh, you freeze up. Colonel Sanders is talking to you. Wait, Colonel Sanders is talking to you about how sweaty you look. You are completely mortified. This can't be your first interaction. What if he never forgets this moment? How will you respond? You take, you take the handkerchief, or you refuse the handkerchief. No, I'm, I'm gross, so let's, let's deal with that. Oh, I think I refused it, damn it. <laughs> you feel horrified that your first interaction with Colonel Sanders is centered around the fact that you were a sweaty mess. Damn it. <laughs> oh, no thanks, this is actually on purpose. It's an old family secret to keeping our skin soft and healthy. You wave his hand away and quickly wipe your face with your apron instead. Professor Dog steps in to settle the class down and set some ground rules. 
Welcome to University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning, the greatest culinary academy in the world. The birthplace of culinary legends past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be... There will be blood. And there might even be a really adorable tiny food. What is that? A chick. <gasps> what if I have to kill a chicken? Oh, no. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. You will lift your sporks and compete in the broom cooking arena. <laughs> Just then, another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. Oh, God. Hi, guys. Sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really miss... Quiet! Late to class is bad enough, but you're interrupting my monologue. You're on the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? D don't you recognize me? This is my third year, and the school with you is my teacher. Oh, I don't think cooking's for you. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does no one remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students that tardiness is unacceptable. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. You turn to see the student Sprinkles is refer uh, referencing, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. <laughs> oh yes, he has a white coat. I love this. <laughs> the class bursts into laughter. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks in the classroom um, as everybody stands in silent obedience. When he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Oh god, I'm, I am gross. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Based on what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. Ugh. You've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart and tough is well known. You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket. But what kind? A beef? Rubber ball, chicken snack. Oh, we in the chicken business, girl. Let's go. You reach beneath your apron and return with a chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favorite. God, he's so cute. Well, well, well. I think there might be some competition for a new star student. Bribes? That's what it takes is bribes? Mm. The furry professor um, immediately devours the snack, leaving your hand slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. Yum. You see the other students eyeing you jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they should have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors at, on them at all times. Yep, because <laughs> that's, that's what a sane person does. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. As everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Miriam. Hey, Pepper, there's a seat. Are there still a seat here? It seems that no one has claimed this seat next to me, if you're interested. Oh, honey. These are two good options, but which do you choose? Um, well, come on, he's stacked over there. <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's see what we can do. You take your seat and sit next to Colonel Sanders. It appears he brought notebooks, pens, or pencils. However, his perfect upright posture shows off his seriousness that makes you confident in his desire to learn. Thanks for offering me the seat. <laughs> um, okay, I've only had two rules. Do all that you can and do it the best you can. It's the only way you'll ever get that feeling of accomplishing something. Oh, jeez. Oh, that's so inspiring. A little off topic, if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Think fast. It's time for a pop quiz. Yay, a quiz about me. This is incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me if you are ready for life at culinary school. Keep your knives sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question one. If a train, if, if train A, oh God, is traveling to point B and train B is, oh no, 
how, oh, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? <laughs> I was like legit scared. <laughs> oh God, extremely. Looking at you, Pop. You gross. That's right. <laughs> oh, um, if anybody knows me knows I'm I am great at math. So, um, forest is to tree as chicken is to night vision goggles. Yep. This is a great test. I'm gonna. I'm doing. I'm killing it. Crushing it. Uh, what is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? I, I'm not looking at the questions, but I'm gonna say it's a spork. Yep. <laughs> That's right. What food is best for a broken heart? Anything, as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. Camel meat. And a pancake that looks like a silly face. Camel meat. <laughs> That's right. Is Sprinkles a good boy? He is a talking dog that teaches at culinary school. He is the best boy. Yes, he's the best boy. That's also right. I wonder if what would happen if I answered all these wrong. Hmm. But I got a perfect score, five out of five. Wow. Be honest, did you cheat? I, I did not. I did not. You look up to see Colonel Sanders has been watching your tally, uh, watching you tally your score, and he's impressed. I know we just met, but I have to confess. <laughs> I think you. I think you have a beautiful brain. <laughs> this guy's such a douchebag. Oh, hot diggity, Pepper. You just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. It's time for lunch. Oh, the sweet, or the Stewart Cafeteria, established 2015. Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. It makes, it makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. A delicious fragrant, fragrance uh, wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. Do you smell that? It must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. <laughs> Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was... Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Oh, that was kind of rude. Hey, I was... It's about lunch. Everyone cheers. But I... Shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch. <laughs> she said shh. In honor of the new semester, I have prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Uh -huh. <gasps> that must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell. You hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. You've heard that he's very talented, but were the rumors true? Is this? Oh, <laughs> I can't believe I'm playing this game. Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. It contains, its contents glimmer in the light. Piled high are huge pieces of chicken breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you. I have not ate dinner and this is not helping. And you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little jealous because I'm, I should have ate, <laughs> I should have ate food for years. I, oh, I'm sorry, for years, I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve the perfect balance of flavors. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I'll say about that. What, you think we want your stupid secret recipe, dude? Pshia. Nah, my dude, nah. <laughs> uh, I'm just uh, drafting a last will and testament in case uh, one of those ingredients is a uh, poison. Got him. <laughs> he looks around nervously and sees if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. 
You wait to see what singer Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was just like writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at that moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could carry, could fry chicken so tender. You see her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with his cooking skills like, like this. She wants him all to herself. Mm. Oh, please. Mm. Well, Van Van, the man man, if you don't want any, I'll take his. Whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. He takes one bite and his eyes grow wide. He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold in his pure exhilaration and, and act unimpressed. Look, <laughs> I love him struggle busting over here. <clears throat> Easy now. There's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. You take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of this bucket and sink your teeth into it. It's amazing. Oh, it's, it's, un, it's unworldly. Tasting Colonel Sanders' food teleports you to another dimension. Alone with your taste buds, gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightlessly. Do I focus my mind and meditate on this moment? Try to identify every flavor? Or do I savor the moment and everything that it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart? Or do I just swim toward the light? Ooh, I don't know. Do I, like, I think it's time to die. I think that's <laughs> if I die, but I think I'm going to meditate and try to identify the flavors, because I'm gonna beat this guy. You let the food rest in your mouth and focus on it, scrutinizing with every flavor. Salt, maybe? Pepper? That's me. Mm, no, that's too obvious. Oregano, basil? Maybe, but there's something else. Something dark, something spicy. You dig deeper, deeper, deeper. Uh, yes, even deeper still until you find it. Could it be? Damn it. <laughs> Who knows? He really did it. How bold, how adventurous to use. Blank. You try to go deeper into the sea of flavors, but this revelation alone is more than you can handle. You snap out of it and realize this information was meant to remain a secret, and yet now you know. A mantle of responsibility now rests upon your shoulders. As you look around, you realize that everyone in this room is consumed by lunch. No one noticed that you traveled through space and time. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with Colonel Sanders. You approach. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he is doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? Ha ha ha. How bold of you to come out and ask. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's an idea I had for a new combination of flavors that will make will make me my fortune and establish my legacy for all time as I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. Mm, it's just you and me talking here. We can keep a se I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own I'd be willing to trade. Ew, he didn't like that. What's the rush? The semester is only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. He's clearly not going to give it up easy. But it doesn't hurt to be persistent. It's a little spicy. Well, you know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't learning be fun? Oh, well, you've got me, Moxie. I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone and then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. Just one ingredient, but you can't tell. I use the secret stuff. It's my great... Oh, it's something my great-grandmother taught me. Hmm. I feel, am I supposed to say something here? Like, blank, wow. You'd never have guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some if you searched. Hmm. 
And this secret stuff is definitely isn't in, uh, isn't the flavor you tasted before. So now you're two ingredients closer to knowing the full recipe. But you don't tell Colonel Sanders that. While you're wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. Well, everyone else is still in the cafeteria, and you decide to look for him. You find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again. Howdy. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. It sounds like you have big plans. I dare say, the biggest. I will leave my mark on this world, you can bet on that. Alone together for the first time, you figure now is the perfect moment to show your personality to him. Nag him to show your own strength. Oh, well, we love that. Um, wow him with a big idea. To add an additional ingredient to really spice things up. Be modest and thoughtful. We like the spice. You know about that. I was thinking about your secret recipe. I don't doubt it. It has a way of leaving an impression on all who taste it. Ugh. You decide to show him that you also know a thing or two about blowing minds with new flavors. I actually had some thoughts on how you can improve it. Improve it? You want to change my secret recipe? And you think you could do better? Have you ever heard of habanero peppers? <laughs> heard of them? I tend an entire garden of chili pepper varieties. <laughs> habanero, poblano, cayenne. But that's not the point. You can't just toss in new ingredients into my secret recipe and expect to improve it. Look, he's not happy at all. A recipe is, oh, a recipe is about balance. It involves careful consideration and refinement. Oh, I, I, I didn't mean to. Let this be the last time you improvise on my recipes, Pepper. I'm headed back to class for the next lesson. You know, I thought I chose right, but I'm starting to think I didn't do a good job there. Cause, uh, okay. I guess we better head back inside. Uh, but you wait a moment so Colonel Sanders doesn't think you're desperately chasing after him. I think I fucked up. That's okay. That's fine. Hmm, so we step into this massive cooking arena. Um, oh, it's like a, what is it, MasterChef? Uh, where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they could need. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we, we get to show off our stuff. Oh, wait a second. Oh no, we have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? You're not gonna blow anything except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're gonna earn with your signature adorable tiny food creations. Look, she got so happy. Welcome students to the cooking arena. For today's lesson, we'll be cooking with partners. Hurry up and pair off. Naturally, Miriam looks over to you, but unable to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. Hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two, that is, me and you. That wasn't clear. Oh, no. You, you want to be my partner? Oh. Sure, Pepper. I'll prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing alone. Two different students quickly take notice. Oh. Hello, new partner. Beep boop bop. Oh my. Two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. It looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay for not being alone forever. Okay, that's... Who do you want to be her partner? Um... I don't... I mean, this guy is so gross. I think I'm gonna do Clank, because robots are fun. I'm sorry, Pop, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Clank today. It's okay, I already ate. It's not entirely clear if Pop has any idea what the point of the school is even is at this juncture. Clank is clearly excited to have some attention. He heats up and begins to roll back and forth. Warp, warp, warp. <laughs> Hold on there, fella. We don't even know the assignment yet. Technically, Clank might not have a face, but there's something charming and earnest about him. 
<laughs> Tissue? I hardly know you. Clank judders and a panel and a panel shakes loose. You get the impression that this is a sign of affection. Oh, it looks like you two are going to be just fine. Now it's time to focus on your own classwork. All right, you two. For today's lesson, we're going to keep it simple. Pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is no chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. Which dish, dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Hmm. Steak tartare seems easy enough. It's fancy, and you don't even need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandmother's mashed potato gravy. That is that is it. That's what I want. I've always been something of a down-home chef. I was thinking we could make something warm, inviting, comforting. Maybe mashed potatoes? <gasps> and gravy? I couldn't imagine one without the other. Colonel Sanders casts a coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beet red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. <laughs> Ugh. It looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does someone have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners. Mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business. Uh, and you better keep your fingers off my man. Mm. It's, it's, oh, he's, I like his theme song. He's really not like a badass though. So, did someone call for me? Ugh. No, geez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Pepper's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. That was the deal, remember? Colonel Sanders returns, arm full of peeled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your old friends. Oh, howdy there. Ashley. Hey, Van Van. Are we cooking in a quartet instead of a duet now? Uh, actually, no. It looked like Pepper was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of mentoring. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fantasy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Huh, doubt it. <gasps> Ooh, don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability to... C I'm so sorry about this voice. I freaking hate it. Uh, concoct creations worthy of admiration. After all, your fried chicken is quite spectacular. But Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we can cast complementary shadows? We fit together, like a thigh and a drumstick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear. She's coming for Colonel. You don't watch out. Ashley is really going at you hard. You need to ask for some backup here before things get ugly. Turn to Colonel Sanders, hunk of hunks, in your time of need. Turn to Miriam, your forever bestie who always has your back. Ugh. It's a dating sim, but I kind of want to go with my bestie. Ugh. I'm here to learn and express myself via my cuisine, not bicker with a prima donna. Partners were chosen at the beginning of class, so let's all respect the format, okay? Turn to Colonel Sanders to confirm that you're on the same page. I choose Colonel Sanders, and Colonel Sanders chooses me. Isn't that right? Ugh! Sometimes conflicts can actually build character. I wouldn't want you to shy away from a bit of healthy competition with our peers, however. Wow, is he just not in that that into you? You'd think a gentleman would defend you in this situation like this. Did you do something to offend him at some point? I think I'm just choosing all wrong. I am not good at dating. Uh, you look for sprinkles in hopes he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. Darn, those cute corgis and their short, sturdy stature. <laughs> you look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes and perfectly creamy mashed texture with plenty of butter and cream for flavor. It's as if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention was elsewhere. 
I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand. He's holding a beautiful white porcelain gravy boat, uh, out of which pours smooth brown gravy, smothering your nearly finished potato dish. Oh, gravy flows down the mold of mashed potatoes. The results look spectacular, and Granny would be very proud. <laughs> Colonel Sanders holds a spork out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it, but he doesn't immediately let go. You too, that the two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric, and time stands still. If you love something, set it free. Together, you dig the utensil into the mashed potatoes and lift a heaping sporkful up. When you see Ashley with a sinister look, you know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. And then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sporkful of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. Oh, fit man, do something, do something. Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will you ever be able to cook something with so much love and integrity? Oh, well, he, I'm sorry. Hold on right there, Pepper. We do not waste food in the broom cooking arena. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoonful, you both better be prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Oh, he's so cute when he's, in, he's mad. <laughs> Look at his little toe beans. Ah! Can I has potatoes face? Van Van rushes back over, a covered dish in his hand. <laughs> it's on a battle axe. I love it. I love it so much. Mashed potatoes with gravy? Pathetic. In just a few minutes, I've prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my spec my specialty braised tentacle octopus in my silky saltwater sauce. Plated on a battle axe, blade forged by my supreme chef ancestors. <laughs> You've ignored me for too long. That ends now. It is I who ha will have the first bite, and you will all look on me with envy. The interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bite of his signature dish right off of his plate. No, don't. Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The results could be toxic. Oh no, too late, it's been eaten. Student, does he not have a name? I, uh, I think I left something in the oven. I, I don't feel so good. Oh, <gasps> it killed him? <laughs> People have died? What is this game? Student! Everyone step back, go take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone and you notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped up by Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain just for a moment and then is almost immediately back to his oblivious self. Oh, whoopsie. God, he didn't die. Tastes like poison, Jesus. The entire class has gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Shock has frozen the whole crowd. They are motionless as statues. The class bell rings, disrupting the moment and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite an obvious danger, has inoculated him against poisons of all kinds. That's great, that's great. I'm not sure the professors here make enough money. Oh, it's the ghost. He's alive-ish. Um, hello. I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you're shaken up by all the really annoy annoying student <laughs> and all of his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on. Seriously, <laughs> he didn't even have a name. Moment of silence for our student ghost. You follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. At night, the school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark and more than a little spooky. Well, this is great, because we've got a ghost now. So this is, this, is, this is a turning point. Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow and speaks softly. 
<laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what is my life? Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me of why I became so passionate about food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him. In a way, you find it inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him that you're developing feelings for him. Colonel, <laughs> sorry, uh, Colonel Sanders? Yes, Pepper? There's something I need to tell you. Oh, hold on right there. It's Van Van. There's something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. You see, when I was just a boy, I had a dream that one day I would be the greatest chef in the world has ever seen. And every day since, I've been working toward that dream. Day and night, never stopping, never resting. Also lifting a lot of weights, like so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts, that our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Ooh. Hey, no, I, you, shut up. I'm the one here to say inspirational stuff and be like the star of the story. Are we forgetting that your cooking literally killed someone? You can't prove that. Hmm. I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Oh, no. Little ghost guy. <laughs> uh, forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I am the hero. <laughs> this spork monster is here to fight a hero. What the f What is that? That's horrible. Van Van is clearly terrified. Uh, I, uh... I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. We will not let him. We will not let harm come to another student. Except for that ghost kid. Kind of dropped the ball on that. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Uh, be afraid. Be very afraid of me because I am a monster. See? Is he rhyming on purpose? Or is that just a coincidence? But before you can dust syntax any further, it's a turn based fight sequence? What will you do? <gasps> oh, I love this so much. Uh, we are going to attack. I, I'm aware, yes. Which attack will you use? Aw, oh, we're gonna kill him with kindness. Cook with love does one damage. It just got real. Okay, that attack really upset the Spork Monster. Spork Monster goes on his attack. They spit hot gravy at you, and you take one damage. Mm. I think I just need to keep beating him up. But I've kind of, I think I've made all the wrong choices so far, so let's just keep doing it. You decide to go on the attack. It worked last time, right? Kind of. Cook with love! Yay! Spork Monster will not forget this. Spork Monster is feeling really threatened by your attack. And he focuses their mashed mind and draws in energy from Mother Earth itself grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? I am not afraid of the spork monster. I I am I am not afraid. But maybe I should defend. Ah oh, god dang it. I'm so bad at video games. This is why I'm playing the dating game. I don't know what to do. You decide to go on the attack again. Which attack will you use? The only one I have. At this rate, the semester will probably be over. <laughs> okay, we're gonna defend, I get it. <laughs> Buffed up, he's really ready to rumble, and he goes on the attack again. He used the utility, utility tensile. You take two damage from the attack. Okay, so we're, we're equal at this point. If you take much more damage, you're not gonna survive this battle. Okay, I get it, all right. I defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation? I curl into a ball? <laughs> no, I'm not cut out for this. Feeling vulnerable, Spork Monsters prepares his ultimate attack, Rounded Edge. <gasps> Colonel! Vile villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a hut of a thousand chickens! <gasps> Popeye Power Pinch! <laughs> Popeye Power Pinch does 10 damage! Spork Monster is defeated! <gasps> you, you saved me! 
an injured sport monster spews steam into the night. Or get mercy, finish him. Or shall we spare this wretched beast? Hmm. I'm, I'm a lover. That's why I'm not, I'm not gonna spare him. We managed to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure, there's been enough death today. That's why we're saving him, okay? Student is dead. He still doesn't have a name. But we are gonna save Spork Monster. Be gone, beast. Don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow. I won't forget this, and I certainly won't be back like you said. The Spork Monster scuttles off into the night. The defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it is so much more. <gasps> it is a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm. Borco. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. Um, okay, we're moving a little fast. Let's just be honest. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep in your house. Um, he must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it home without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you are tucked in tightly. Good night. Oh, good night, my colonel. Hmm. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders. For some reason, Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. <laughs> yes! <laughs> oh, the ghost! Student! Oh, I liked student. Uh, you wake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories or premonitions? You lie in bed and stare at the ceiling. Thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders cooking yesterday. You still can't believe he really used... I wonder if I'm supposed to... Uh, I don't know. And then there was that secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We're going to go with that. Meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter with the Spork Monster, she launches into her story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um, I think I might like Clank. <laughs> oh god, I chose right. Yeah, she made out with a mannequin. This is great. Uh, like him? Like, like, like? I know it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like, I like, like him. We got to talking after class and he's actually totally a sweet guy. Not like that, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? Uh, no, but that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was so popular that he was voted prom king at, at a school he didn't even, even go to. And was also the convertible that he himself rode in at the front of the homecoming parade. Oh, was also, and was also the convertible. I'm thinking maybe something got lost in pressure cooker language translation there. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. I read that wrong, because I didn't read who was talking. Uh, you were Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school? The most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning? You're a thing now? Definitely connected yesterday. Ah, oh, I'm sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't he be into you, I guess? Laughing at the implication that, that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? 
However, you don't tell her that you know the second ingredient too, which you discovered on your own. Your bestie's eyes light up. A secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. This summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wondering. Oh, this can't be good. He told me all about his passion for spices, secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from a super duper rare dried flower petals, and that if I did him a big favor, I could get have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. So I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Oh, she smuggled. <laughs> oh no, later when I cooked, um, later when I cooked, I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me. The flavor was unlike anything I've ever tasted. Honey, it was drugs. It was drugs, baby. I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. Whatever, anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we've stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I didn't mean to hit that so fast. My bad, but I'm sure she said something wonderful. Uh... Okay, well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe, and besides, I only know one ingredient, so I doubt I'd be much use to anyone. Aw, oh, we can't be lying to our friends. Please, please, please. It would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you or Colonel Sanders. What do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? Ooh. Oh, I can't. That's not nice. I can't. You gotta protect the secrets. Um. But I don't wanna lie to her either. See, this is why I don't. Um, I don't do secrets. There's just no reason to do secrets. I'm going to be honest with my friend. Can't I just feel like I'm not going to share the secret with you, okay? I'm sorry. It's called trust, and we are in school. I gotta make up a fake ingredient. Oh no, I'm gonna get her kicked out. It's okay. I know the secret. We all know what the. We know most of the the spices. That's okay. We just don't know the secret one. Okay, I'll tell you, but it has to stay a secret, which we all know it's not going to. Miriam nods furiously. He told me that he uses blank. Never would have guessed that, would you? Her eyes light up imagining such a thing, and you figure out that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone. <gasps> oh, you know what? These games are just for fun. I'm just having fun. I don't care if I choose all the wrong options. I don't care. Before you can ask her uh, to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. <laughs> Fucking crap. Uh, it's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school on a horse. Stand back and admire his majestic glory or run to him. He's arriving on a horse. We're just gonna, uh, we're gonna, <laughs> I would run away. Come on, this is silly. Uh, we're gonna run to him. You decide the best way to show Miriam how serious you and Colonel Sanders are would be to run to him. Surely he'll sweep you off your, <laughs> oh no, onto the back of a stallion and you'll ride away together. That'll show her. Uh, oh, Colonel, my Colonel. <laughs> However, your sudden mood surprised the horse and rears up, kicking you <laughs> directly into the face. The force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. Oh no, in the darkness, you see a vision. <gasps> Stoden! Oh, Pepper, I'm here to deliver you a message. Oh no, not this guy. No, we like student. It is important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world could end. So you know it's serious. I have been trapped in a, in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times. And that name is... Oh no! Before you can continue, you wake. Oh no, jeez. Oh jeez, student, don't worry. We'll get you, man. We'll get you. 
You wake to find Colonel, Sandy, St Colonel Sanders tending to you. He roused you back to life with a satchel of secret spices. Or is it just his natural seasoned musk? Ugh. Uh, compliment the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes. Lean in for a kiss. No, we, we, we deserve to get kicked in the face for that. Let's... Uh, maybe he shouldn't be riding a horse to school, and maybe you shouldn't be running up to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who is in the wrong here, but let's be honest, it's probably you. Uh, but one thing is for sure, that Colonel Sanders is pretty dreamy. That horse has beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressing into my face. Oh, he liked that. Well, that's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Sanders goes away and goes into school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals. Ashley and Van Van are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes bad, experimenting with restricted ingredients bad, summoning a demon bad. Well, let's get student back, he seemed nice. You try to get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulder, but he sees you coming. Oh, whoa, whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Tell them to stop acting immature, act like you're not interested in them, and, but you're really trying to get a closer look. I really fucking hate these people. You're, uh, you immediately dress the rivals down for their immature behavior. Culinary school is to be respected. This kind of nonsense is a waste of everybody's time. Oh, now you've upset them. <laughs> he looks like Goku. <laughs> um, oh, and you and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. You finally get a look at what it is they were hiding and you instantly recognize it. <gasps> it's the book! Just like the one you found after your encounter with Spork Monster. That's the same book I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. That book is a family heirloom and its contents are a secret. You notice that they haven't been studying the book. They've got popped pinned to the wall, and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch them in his mouth. Oh, little, little pop, you sweet baby. <laughs> they're not playing with you, babes. Poor baby. Uh, before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students, and it's almost time for class. Beep, beep. Clank must be running late. He's in such a hurry that he rolls right over Van Van's meaty foot. Ooh. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Buzz womp. <sighs> Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language. Not even from a sand mixer. Womp womp. No, your mother was a sand mixer. <laughs> oh. Poor little guy. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. <gasps> Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone is completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena at last, or at least, or don't. Honestly, what do I care? I've got a lovely career aspirations to focus on. Jesus. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing a car all around town. My tiny legs are very, very tired. <laughs> uh, but I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Rub his furry, do rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. 
Sprinkle stops in his track and sniffs the air around you. Something has him in a trance. It's the scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Sprinkles jumps up on you and licks your face. Down, boy, down. Off hopping. That comment shouted by Colonel Sanders has snapped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. Off hopping. Hmm. Sorry, I got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll, be, uh, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, the chicken. You want to pay attention to the lesson, truly you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed their name. But you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders, and you miss most of the important parts. Uh, when you come to, Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Pepper, naturally, this appears to be, uh, appears to you to be a sample platter. Which item do you wish to sample? A glass of water, a shimmering pepper, or a dog biscuit? I love peppers. A brightly colored pepper stands out from all the other items. It sparkles in the most eye-catching way, so naturally you reach out to grab it and eat it right away. However, your body is not prepared for the heat. God, uh, the pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination and it feels for, like forever as you trip through the universe. <laughs> oh, my friend. Oh, student. Oh, I love this guy. Oh, I'm here to give you an important message. Oh, you must avenge my death and fulfill your destiny. All you must do is... <laughs> I was saying, to fulfill your destiny, all you must do is cough, cough. I'm sorry, I think I got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine, I'll work through. <coughs> to fulfill <coughs> the prophecy, <coughs> you must, you feel yourself to begin, uh, begin to regain consciousness. Aw, oh, man, <laughs> student. <laughs> Uh, you come to and find everyone is staring at you. Sparkles is, or Sprinkles is pissed. That pepper was the last of its kind on earth. Now it's gone forever. And you think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can relax, the cafeteria lights dim and your rivals enter to make a dramatic announcement. Today's lunch will be prepared via timed competitive cook-off. The levels of theatrics with these two is off the charts. Demand they stop wasting everybody's time or step up and tell them you're on. Let's go. Bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with you fools before I, before I set my lunch down, then so be it. I'm not the fool, you're the fool, fool. Good one, Van Van. I like your grump, your grumption, Pepper. Hmm. I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling part, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sportsing. <laughs> Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least, not until we turn on the timer. Hmm. Timer, ready, my god. Just then, a huge light blasts in your face, flashing the words, timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. Ow! I stand corrected. The hard way builds sol solid, the hard way builds solidly. Sol sol I can't read. A foundation of confidence that can't be swept away. And that's an original quote by me. In case anyone was wondering, I hope it's a message that lifts you to victory. Like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. I will defeat you myself. You had his chicken, and you made his mashed and you made the mashed potatoes and gravy on, on day one. And you're feeling like you can really impress him here again. It's time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. The timer runs down, you'll be forced to pick randomly. What temperature does water boil at? Uh, Fahrenheit? It's, I don't think it's Fahrenheit, it's Celsius. Uh, that's right. But how would you have even got into this school without knowing that? Winner gets to rub my furry belly. Let that enticing offer motivate you. 
you're gonna need some season uh, to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices did he say that he used? 11. That's right. You might not, you might not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you've, you're headed in the right direction. Oh, tail wagging intensifies. He's getting ready for those uh, tummy scratches. Now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. What state of mind offers the most flavor? I'm gonna be honest, I don't remember. We're gonna say gratitude. <laughs> That's right, you must never take this opportunity for granted if you hope to succeed. Your classmates are rooting for you, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You better pick up the pace if you wanna survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day, you meditate on his advice. You draw energy from that place. Now would be a great time to harness that energy. So where does it come from? The small town where big dreams are made of. On the shoulder of Orion. Uh, I didn't have a choice. <laughs> it's a horrible time to start forgetting important things. Oh, You try to shut out the noise of the arena and start focusing on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Sizzling. That's wrong. Don't make me get the spray bottle. Next question. You notice Colonel Sanders out of the corner of your eye. I believe in you, Pepper. He's actually cheering you on. Which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you're doing. Now all you can do is think about getting kicked in the face. How many spoonfuls of Grady would a traditional Colonel S <laughs> What were you thinking? Get your mind in that. I didn't even get to read him. Oh, Colonel Sanders. You are, uh, you are stranded on a desert island with only one de dessert or dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a honk. I know, right? Sprinkles. You know what? You shouldn't be focused. Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. I'm sorry, I forgot the question. Colonel Sanders riding together on a gondola. What does it have to do with crafting spectacular fried chicken into delicate baked biscuits? Woof woof. You're really struggling to keep up. Next question, uh, the next station over. Ashley's already begun plating elements of her dish. It's colorful and complex. To make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into the stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Ugh, yikes. Bzz. I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in the kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. Or you might not have any hands, but Pepper does. And a good chef needs to be touching the dough down, or oh, needs to be touching the dough to know when it's properly mixed. There is an easy way and a hard way. You don't get far by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. You immediately shove your hand into the mixer to rescue your dough before it's overmixed. Pepper, no! But you're not fast enough, and your hand gets stuck, and it's immediately crushed by. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There's no way you'll ever be able to use that hand for the rest of the match. Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is that the easiest way can turn out much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. This battle is over. Yeah, it can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. Sweetheart, look at your hand. You simply can't go on. Aw, oh, that's so bad. Here I am with the completed dish, ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no. It wouldn't be fair to compare the two on the account of Pepper's injury. You see Sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I skipped straight to dessert. Okay, that's like a five-star dish. Um, under this white chocolate dome, you'll find a wide array of del delights, taking you on a journey of flavor that tastes good and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Pepper to do the honor, but since, you, you, since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring this creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. Colonel Sanders? If you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients within. Oh my God, okay. All right, Ashley, you're, you're not a nice person, but you can cook. 
Inside, you'll find a delicate fried cheese croquette atop a slice of honeycomb, ice cream two ways, a tender ooh, nougat, and pearls of blueberry galay. Colonel Sanders seems intrigued, but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger into the mm. chocolate sauce. Simplicity isn't your strong suit, is it, Ashley? <gasps> oh, you. <laughs> As he places the sauce covered finger onto his lips, Ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear. A dab of sauce sticks to his mustache. Internalize the rays you feel. Put yourself between the two. We're just gonna internalize. We're just gonna let this, let that horrible ship play. Oh God. Your rage burns so intently within your eyes that they burst into flames. The flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn to ash and they fall off your face, which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of the semester, perhaps ever. So I've gotten kicked in the face and now I have no eyebrows. Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance, not to mention your crispy fried route, you run for the quad to be alone. The beautiful weather feels like an insult. Inside of you, a storm rages. It's Colonel Sanders. He probably, uh, he's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married. And he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. You try to hide from him, but he approaches you directly. I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. <laughs> we should get that checked out. I'm fine, okay? Can't you just leave me alone? I am a loser, and I am not fit to fill your fryer. <laughs> I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I've never failed at anything before? That's, that's exactly what I think. Well, think again. I wasn't always the man you see before you, enrolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, handsome, sure. I was born that way. But... I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. <laughs> I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule her handler. That one was especially humiliating. Mules could be so cruel. I, I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together which is true now, but hasn't always been. It kind of sounds like this guy could probably use a hug. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. As Colonel Sanders changes focus, you can see something ignite inside him, a burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure, it's honest. It's something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! <laughs> okay, just as the moment grows intimate, you're interrupted by a threatening shadow presence. Please be the smork monster. It's the smork monster! Battle scarred from the night before, you prepared for the worst. Borco? It is I. I know I said we wouldn't be back after the whole fight to the death thing. Maybe you don't really want to see me anymore, but I just wanted to say that it was wrong to attack you, and I apologize. I know what it's like having to always look over your shoulder. Monster problems, am I right? Aw, oh, thanks, Borco. I'm glad there are no hard feelings. Getting jumped by a giant creature in the dark of night can really rile a person up. I also want to apologize for the way I, I, I switch right into attack mode. Aw, oh, I did kind of mess up there. I know that you're strong, and cooking school can put a person under a lot of stress. I actually used to go to this school. Oh, the spark monster, I'm sorry. I actually used to go to this school. I wasn't always a spark monster, you see. I don't believe it. You were human once? Well, no. I was a golden retriever, but still a student until... One day, some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me, and I was forever transformed. Uh-oh, a magic spell book. Precisely. I had procured a copy for myself, but somewhere along the way I lost it. If you find such a book, I beg you, respect it. You're a powerful chef. You shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. No, 
You should be protecting the innocent from those who would cheat them through sorcery and guile. If you need me, do not fear. I will be there. Hmm. Sounds like there are some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Pepper, together, I am sure we can defeat them. Come back to my hideaway and we can discuss. Hmm. A personal invite. You can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like, but it sounds like you're about to find out. Stepping inside Sanders' home, surrounded by things, you start to feel a special bond with him. Let's peruse. So we got a chicken. He's got a kill review. Um, there's a camel, so I'm glad we didn't choose camel meat. I'm assuming that's an urn, so... Is that, gra is that his grandpa? Is that pop? Is that pop pop? Stepping inside. Oh, we already read this. It looks like you live such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every... <laughs> Every day can be an adventure if you approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you been working on any new recipes of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. Well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it yet, but I'm close. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. It's meant to pair with something spicy, or something crispy, or perhaps both. Now you've got him right where you want him! Should you reveal your new creation to him, or keep it a secret just for you? Nope. You decide that you're ready to re uh, that, that you're as ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dis dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. The shredded cabbage dish glisten. That's a hard one. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux Hideaway. Oh, <gasps> it's magnificent. Together you chow down on the creamy slaw until a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite. I'd like to have it around so that I can admire its taste later and think back on this moment. You could offer to make him more, but he seems like the very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please, make yourself comfortable. I'll be back in just a moment. You realize that now is the perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that... I like how he already did this toxic trait. <laughs> I snooped already. Ah. So you take a closer look at uh, each item seems to uh, radiate memories and emotions. Tap on an item to discover more about the kernel. Let's see this urn. Take a closer look at this large urn sitting on a nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. It's dusty, but when you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, here lies the ashes of all my past careers and business failures. Oh, poor guy. Oh, uh, what is this? This must be where he keeps the secret recipe. You think for a moment. What number is important to Colonel Sanders? Then it dawns on you. As soon as you turn the dial to 11, 11, 11, the safe opens. Oh, he's not right. You find a single note. Can chicken be prepared sashimi style? Hmm. Uh, oh, notepad. We're snooping. A lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of the comb. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair therein isn't just silver in color, it's actually made of spun silver. Hmm. Let's go snoop. Uh, who's this guy? An adorable little baby crawls across the floor. From the goatee and mustache combo he sports, you figure that this must be the Colonel Sanders himself. I like how he was born with a beard. Or maybe that's the drumstick that, that he seems to be waving at like a rattle. Who frames up baby pictures of just themselves? What a lonely guy. Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of a company they founded, right? Shots fired. What's, what kind of scent does he smell? A scented candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. Power tool. Freshly starched collar. Piece of wood floating in the lake. Summer of 69? No, it's one of the secret recipe ingredients. <sighs> um, 
You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. You take one off the hand. Oh, is it just the coat? Because that'd be hot. And we like that. The jacket is, is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in his scent. They say that home is where the heart is. Is this what they meant? Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he's been working on. He wants you to taste it. You try to act casual until he asks you why you're wearing his coat. Oh, oh I don't usually loan those out, but I must say, it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket. You forget to take it off, or you forgot to take it off. You decide now that is your moment to make your big move. You tell him that you're cold. You fess up and tell the truth. <gasps> mm. I wish there was like a poll, but I, I don't have anyone watching me, so I, 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 that's fine. That's fine. Um, I don't think he would like us to rush in, but I think I may just tell him the truth. I was snooping. I was snooping. You confess. I think I've developed feelings for you. I might be developing feelings for you, too, but I'm concerned. I can't let anything get in the way of my dreams. Overwhelmed, you take off the jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leading Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Yes, Pepper? I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. You talk late into the night and drift off into a slumber. Dream sequence! <laughs> Oh, my favorites. I love them. You wake to a beautiful morning in Colonel Sanders' hideaway. Did you make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders? Only time will truly tell. Um, that's a no. <laughs> Damn it. Today is the day that could change the rest of your life. And you think about this new secret ingredient that you just learned. Stuff. It's just, uh, uh, in some jurisdictions, stuff isn't even legal. But if the recipe is a secret, how will they know? Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast, and your mouth waters at the sight of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. You taste Colonel Sanders' food, and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So, would you say that we're a perfect match? How presumptuous. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Oh, such, such confidence, such grace. Could he be the world's greatest gift to cookery? Flatter him. Yeah, KFC's pretty good. You know, I think we make a great team. A single tear begins to pull in the corner of his eye as he gazes out the window, which is behind him. And with the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be? Could could he be talking to you? All all this is happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and get home. There's still one more day of school after all. The University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. You get home to find a very something very surprising. She is waiting for us. Where have you been? because I had one heck of a night. I've been so desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something happened to you. It's okay, I was just, but now that it turns out you're fine, I can finally get you up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Okay, sure. You will not believe what happened to me at school yesterday. I went on a date. I, I absolutely can believe that. Since I've been partnered up with Clank, he asked me to go out with him. And of course I told him, you better keep your dials turned to polite and respectful. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time uh, together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure, I can get to know the little metallic guy. Long story short, he took me skydiving with his friends, but things quickly spiraled out of control. You went skydiving with a pressure cooker? <laughs> And now I'm not really sure where we stand. You don't give Mar Mar you don't give Miriam time to tell her whole story. Um, however, bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. And I went on a date too, 
back to Colonel Sanders' house where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened, but the emotional connection, wowzers. Uh, Marion tells you to move on from this whole Colonel Sanders obsession and focus on school. Mm, you went skydiving with a appliance. So, if being obsessed with Colonel Sanders is wrong, I don't want to be right. After a short argument, you both agree to go your separate ways. She's going to... I shouldn't have told her the secret. I should have made up a fucking spice. When you arrive at school, your encounter with your rivals, you encounter the rivals in the quad. Um, you can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop, though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because, you know, he's, he's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, don't put him in a toilet. Oh, it's great. I'll order you up one right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. <laughs> sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Aww. Oh, baby. Uh, you can get your swirly dipped, too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Mm. Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. <laughs> there is a... Um, there is that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? Ooh. I've got some nerve, Pepper, suggesting I pick on a defenseless horse. Now you're twisting my words, and I won't Ooh. have it. You clench your fist, but the injury from yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince with pain. It doesn't look like you can go on cooking like that. Uh, might as well just give up. I'll never give up, ever. Colonel Sanders arrived just as it appears things are close to boiling over. A naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. Is everyone excited for the final day of school? Pepper, how's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in fighting form this by this afternoon. Aren't you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? She's the devil. Hmm. But what about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. Excuse me, Pepper. I'm more capable enough to speak for myself. Uh -huh. <gasps> Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk into class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine art of fine foods. See you inside, Pepper. Uh, yeah, annoyed. Um, I don't know how he. What what happened? Is he mad that is he mad I didn't make a move? God dang it! Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who she, um, for who you know she really is. You walk across the quad to get some distance. An attempt to distract yourself from how uh, slighted you feel by that interaction with Ashley, you take out the spell book you recovered uh, yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, is that a book? It looks like bad news. It's just something I found lying around. It would appear to be some sort of uh, grimoire. Or grimoire. I think, how, how do you say it? Grimoire? Grim, grim, get, grimoire? Magic. But I don't really believe in that magic stuff. A, a grimoire? Grimoire. Like a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a magic book if it weren't really powerful? I can think of one surefire, surefire way to find out. You open to a page covered in arcane writings. Cast only in case of an extreme emergency, it says around the edges of the page. I could use this spell here that says it will erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming exam. Whoa, that is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else, like anything else, not rooted in dark magic? Maybe like tie a string around your finger? Okay, fine, it is drastic, but desperate times call for desperate measures. You've got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you, and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Uh, no, because he told me the secret spice, and I need that, so, no. You take your uh, friend's advice and put the book away, and it's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room, waiting for the students to arrive. He clears his voice to make a quick announcement. 
I want you all to know, I feel something of a dog moment coming on, but I assure you, it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. Oh, he must be hungry. Reach for some old homework to give him a snack. Dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially Sprinkles. Just wait to see what happens. Sprinkle stops in his tracks, and he focuses on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny orange squirrel perched on a cherry tree outside. <laughs> Sprinkle turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom, and begins barking uncontrollable, uh, uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence, I told you never to come back here. Terrence, I will destroy you, Terrence. Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying all over his face. The squirrel looks over, but doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? You better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again, Terrence. After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in hearing distance, he returns to his professional tone. <clears throat> I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an, uh, an important point. Thank you, Pepper, for reminding me to dole out this indispensable bit of wisdom, you see. But before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills over into the class. Sprinkles is interrupted by whirs and sparks coming from the back of the room. I told you to save it for after class. Oh, he's sad bear, babes. You think I wanted to be thrown from a plane strapped to a stranger? Miriam and Clank appear to be arguing, but you haven't learned to speak Clank's language for mechanical noises. Hmm. But no, you had to show off your cool friend. <laughs> your cool kid friends, Jeff and Joan, J and J, forever. Watch us form a triangle in mid air as we descend. Triangles are the strongest shape, don't you know? Bzz, bzz. Yeah, well, that doesn't make a great date. Aw. Then take Jeff and Joan with you. You can all hold hands as you pedal down the mountain or off a cliff or all. What all? For all I care. All oh, sad beeps. Clank begins to shudder. Steam pours out of the gasps in his gaps in his panels, and then a loud ding stops him in his tracks. Oh my God! He blew up. No amount of seasoning is gonna make me want to eat that, Clank. Oh. Clank bursts out a completely deep-fried sneaker, considering that he himself has wheels, not feet. It's not entirely clear where it came from. In terms of deep friend footwear, I guess it looks okay. Clank slowly rolls out of the room to be alone with his shoe. Everyone tries to pretend like they didn't see that entire thing go down. Um, nothing like a loud public breakout to cast a pay a pall over the final day of school. Oh, well, that was, that was uncomfortable. But we mustn't be distracted by what lies ahead. The final competition, showdown challenge exam, TM. <laughs> Why is that trademarked? Uh, I'm still working on that title. Oh, I get it. But I think you get it. Uh, test time approaches. See you at the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby that I'm in need of a pep talk. Hey, Miriam, are you okay? <laughs> Okay, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Her tiny, co her tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure, so you know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is just a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm gonna say it out loud. You don't need anyone, me and you. We're gonna cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short banks, but she hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not gonna settle up with Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me? Of course not. Well, may maybe sort of, but I'm sure there's a pony out there with your name on it and a branch big enough for both of us and whoever else we wanna bring along. If it's not Pop or Clank or anyone you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest in you anyhow. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I, 
should really review my menu for today. I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet that Professor Dog is going to love it up. While you were pep-talking Miriam, you completely missed lunch. But that's okay, because you had a better idea of how to spend your time before your exam. You decided to head to the arena early to practice a dish. This is it, the location of your final challenge. A test of will, a test of courage, a test of talent and a chance to beat the pants off of Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his eviler counterpart, Ashley. As planned, you begin to run through a quick test of a recipe you've been working on. Pepper's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making this dish comes second nature to you, and you're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven. But as soon as you do, your cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Pepper, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. Oh, just, you know, taking it all in. I'm big into visualizing success. I'm looking at my station and picturing it and picturing victory. The pot pie has begun to bake and the smell is slowly filling the space around you. Mm. Visualizing, huh? That's too bad. I was hoping you were in here cooking something delicious. You would usually happily share your food with anyone who's hungry. The last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you the cook-off. You decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires. But that decision gets so hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Um, fess up about the practice dish. It will not burn. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> you got me. Uh, I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know. My nose can smell a pot pie from 400 yards. <laughs> That's an oddly specific distance, but you'd expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was pot pie just from the smell. Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie with an all butter crust. And my nose is telling me something else. Oh no, is it burning? <laughs> no, I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. But it'll probably start burning any second, so you should probably get that out. The moment of truth. Mmm, wow. <gasps> it's the best pot pie I've ever tasted. I've always loved country cooking and I could eat this all day. There's no time left. The final showdown is about to begin. Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. That is, except to cook with everything you've got. And you step up for the cook-off of a lifetime. You decide that mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are prepping wildly elaborate dishes per their usual over-the-top selves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely preparing to go <laughs> preparing to go big, going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve something perfect. His original recipe, fried chicken. The intensity of the room starts full at a full 10 of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, it's getting serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg. Oh, he's southern. Egg wash. Miriam furiously injects ingredients into a itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend. Baster Blaster! <laughs> Van Van flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. Let's rock and roid. Oh, I liked that. that. That made me happy. <laughs> Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with lightning speed. <laughs> Shallow personality? <laughs> Spatula! Even Clank gets in on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak <gasps> English? It's the singularity as it was foretold. We mustn't let it happen or the appliances uprising will take on us all. self distro <gasps> Van Van quickly unplugs Clank and rolls him out of the back door into the arena. Is Van Van a good dude? As you frantically prepare your dish, you notice Ashley has a spell book out. She is going to use some dark magic to turn the tide. But you've got your own book and you're desperate to not see her win another battle. Should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic, even if it's almost certainly evil magic? Uh, no, we're gonna do it the hard way. 
Who needs magic when you've got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, Pepper. Miriam notices, too. I've always believed in you, Pepper, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. You turn to notice Miriam at your station, cheering for you. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're cheering here, who's, who's cooking? Tiny food, short cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Uh -huh. It's the secret ingredient. However, neither of you know that Colonel Sanders made that first ingredient up to throw up um, to throw you off in the trial to keep his secret recipe. Whoa. Uh -oh. That boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling up into the dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. Spork monster, it is I, Steve, the spork monster. Steve, wait, what happened to Borko? You're not even here to battle me, are you? We spork monsters are many. I think Borko had the day off, but you have conjured Steve and I hate to battle, but I, I'd say you're doing pretty all right. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of cooking competition? I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? I'm sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve the Spork Monster notices that you've got your grimoire stash beneath your cooking station. I see what you're up to. Crisscrossed some magical items and accidentally summoned me, huh? <laughs> yeah, you guessed it, sorta. So if you're here, would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of salted water? I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top shelf, actually, you know? When I was just a little spork pup back in the old country, you can feel spork monsters winding up to tell a very long and involved story, and you don't exactly know where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. It's kind of like that time in monster school that I had fallen asleep during a scare tactics class and when I woke up. So you toss a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hint. Ah, never mind, I'll tell you later, good luck. Having suffered this huge setback, you don't know how you could ever win. You summon extra power from deep within yourself and you give up and drop out of culinary school. Wow, those are my, th that's a hard choice. I can do this. I have what it takes and I came here to win. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange as culinary energy flows. I'm going full like Super Saiyan. <laughs> my heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for. Yes, Pepper, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you beat summoning immediately fades back out. Oh my God, you, interru you interrupted my inspiring monologue. Student. Student, what are you doing, man? He's sorry. My heart is pure, my hands are steady, my taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment, and I will show the world my cookery. You begin to levitate off the ground, energy courses through your body. You know that with this power, you can do anything, except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you were powering up, your chicken pot pie overcooked and the oven can't be served. But don't worry, dear Pepper, you may have suffered some setbacks, but all is not lost. Impressed with your fortitude, Colonel Sanders de uh, decides that you have earned his support. I've been watching you today, and I must say, I'm truly impressed. You've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches. He steps up to your station and stands right beside you. I am here to help. All you've managed to make is mac and cheese. Time is almost up, so you're gonna need it. But Colonel Sanders, what about the test? What happened to you? What about the rules? Following the rules has never really been my thing. I followed my heart. What a guy. Ah, oh, Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicious fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. And besides, oh, and besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprising effects that surpasses their individual efforts. Are you suggesting if we combine forces, we can form the perfect food union? Time's up, students. With time expired, it's the moment everybody has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. 
it seems we're missing some students. Pop? Clank? From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only come from one student. <laughs> I'm flying! It sounds like that's coming from the broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook all by the elastic of his underpants. People are so mean to him. Pop, get down from there right now. Let me guess, did Van Van have something to do with this? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? I thought a wedgie was a salad. Oh, it's close. It looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing how he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in, US in UCSAL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second. Pranks. Pranks. Clank! Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear a signature whirl, beep, or other... Oh, automatopoeia. But there's none. That was not that word. I'm sorry. <laughs> Somehow, he must have gotten unplugged. I guess... Well, we'll figure that out later. That leaves only four remaining students. Please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three whole long days. But after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. I am starving, by the way. This, this is not a good idea. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made... Oh my god, <laughs> so cute! <laughs> it's it's tender udon noodles and savory soup. Like it's got a Naruto fish cake! A little cup of tea! <laughs> my word, it's so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny Naruto make? I spy a float on its itsy bitsy bowl. <laughs> yes, chef. Please, call me Sparkles. Chef is my father's name. Oh, sparkles. Sprinkles. Yes, sprinkles. And some green tea I made with baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime. Would anyone else like to taste? Oh, come on. I'm not one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electronic toothbrush for dogs. Fine. I'll enjoy it all by myself. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much, but it was less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus. Really? I do... Do I taste a dish with as much love poured into yours? Or rarely do I. Miriam is overjoyed, and she gives you a big hug. Thank you, Pepper, for helping me believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Now describe your dish. I made... Uni over smooth egg custard and an axe-hewn urchin shell topped with caviar. Did you skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second different colored type of urchin? Yes, sprinkles. It's a bit much, don't you think? Uh, that's exactly why I did it. A bitch much is kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni, but he can't get his nose close enough on the account of all the spikes. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof, woof. <laughs> Please be gentle of my cuisine. Mm. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't get past all the needles. He reels back, and his tongue is poked and potted. Ouch! My tongue! The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat. It keeps poking my tongue. <laughs> this qualified. <laughs> A stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of, ne of needles could make it difficult to eat? Dejected. Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Disqualified for glamour? Don't dip come the pithity. <laughs> this is the last time you've heard of me. Before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps up a bowl of milk. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog and I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps calm my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now describe your dish. I made... She is... She's, she's 
this is this is great. I made orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rose water syrup topped with French meringue and connected by sugar glass. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I'd ask that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food at a cooking school? Got toast in your ears or something? Pepper, I told you, it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it. I did an extremely good job cooking it too. I didn't realize that we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating School for the Hungry. <laughs> I suppose I suppose you could smell it if you absolutely insisted, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If food cannot be eaten, then it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. <gasps> Rage overtakes Ashley, and she, fi and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine up. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. And with that, Ashley storms off into the, the and to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be fake nice and liked by everyone. This isn't the last you've heard of me either. If this class gets much smaller, I'll be teaching myself. You and Colonel Sanders, the final cooks, step up together. Two chefs? What began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese has become something else. Oh, it's Colonel Sanders. Same thing. He examines it closely, sniffing and eyeing the bowl. Oh. Uh-oh, I don't have a good feeling about this. From somewhere in the room, a literal drum roll plays. Just when I thought I've seen everything in this kitchen, you give me this this thing and completely blow me away in my 49 dog years of life I have never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced it's so delicious in fact that everyone passes in class oh participation reward yay you pass you pass and you get a car he's the Oprah of corgis everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl they all seem true to uh, transcend into this reality in another dimension. You win. Together, you and Colonel Sanders have made a new menu item. The new menu item is so impressive, impressive, even the Van Van and Ashley are drawn back by its magnificent, magnific, magnificent fragrance. I've been talking for a minute. When they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl, they admit that you are indeed an excellent chef. Sprinkle declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. They, uh, there were supposed to be more battles, but come on, how could they be better than this one? Now that the school year is complete and everyone has graduated, the students return for one last assignment to get their groove on. The cafeteria has been completely redecorated in order to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. DJ Dog is in the house. Oh, oh. <laughs> you knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a renowned turntablist? Who says you can't teach an old dog new tricks? Van Van, oh man. Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they've committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were the villains. For a moment, you actually believe them. <gasps> Not another haunting. No ghosts allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in the school's bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was a trick to get you to finally notice me being a student. Oh, amusing. And now that everyone is together, the spork monster, he is totally mellowed out. <laughs> everyone, the spork monster is no more. From here on out, I prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, party monster. Student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up in talking to Spork. Sorry, party monster. Dejected. Student walks. <laughs> oh, student. Oh, maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found love in her cooking. You know, she's going to do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like a Hollywood movie premiere. Who can command such an entrance? It's Pop. He arrived late to the dance, but apparently for a good reason. Walking the carpet, the carpet, you see a, you see perched atop his dirty chef hat, a crown. Welcome back, Pop. 
I know you weren't able to complete the final exam and accept your diploma, so we had it mailed directly to your father. We figured it was the least we could do, you know, for the school's dean. Oh, that's why you're here. Oh, okay, yep, yep, now I get it. And we get a new wing of the school, not to mention the honor of educating the son of the chancellor of such and such. The music of the dance is interrupted by the sound of spark, sparking and electrical hissing. It's Clank, who's arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Oh, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank, and I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet of another dimension. What? What? <laughs> I actually feel like I knew this the whole time. Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. Miriam, will you come with me? I, I don't know what to say. Besides no, obviously. I have just begun to learn who I really am. This isn't the time for me to devote my life to figuring out who you are, Clank. You are blown away by Miriam's maturity. It's pretty clear she has managed to surpass you in that regard. Okay, all right, shots fired. I understand, kind of. Humans are weird. <laughs> a portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Hey, howdy classmates. Just like the first day you met him, he has come prepared to feed an entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. This time it's a full meal. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. <laughs> The end? No, it's not the end. <laughs> As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner, Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Pepper, what are you doing sitting here all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me, what are the qualities you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Off the top of my head, oh, I don't know. A spicy musk? a tidy goatee, and a degree from the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning, just to name a few. It truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. As you glide across the dance floor hand in hand with Colonel Sanders, the future stretches out in front of you. And once my hundredth franchise is up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, Pepper. Oh my god! <laughs> no! <laughs> How sweet! We'll work together and then play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um, I was thinking this is something I just need to do by myself. <gasps> but who will help you run your restaurants? I don't need help. Besides, based on your time at school here, do you really think you're <laughs> running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be you found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef? Could you live with only half of him? Would you be able to endure sharing him with his other love? A life of an entrepreneur? Ah, uh, I, I suppose I could enroll in a pastry school? Oh, my dear Pepper. I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. I, 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 I answered the questions wrong. And all along the way, you'll have me by your side. Okay, <laughs> the end. <laughs> oh, goodness. going to uh, I'm gonna be honest that was that was um, uh, that was not good <laughs> I think I, I think I just answered all the questions wrong so I'm a little bummed out by all that but you know it's fine I, I had a really good time uh, that was that was a lot of fun um, <laughs> I'm really sad about student I really want to know what his name was I feel like I feel like he he had like the the biggest place in my heart. Colonel Sanders, kind of a, kind of, kind of a D-bag. So anyways, love you all. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening. <laughs> Bye.